for the next session on conformity assessment we have mr warren markel with us mr warren markel is the vice president of ameb policy he has worked at the national institute of standards and technology advising government agencies on the use of standards and conformity assessment and served as co conveyor for the revisions of iso iec 17025 and iso iec 17060 So over to Warren, and I'll uh, show your presentation. Excellent. Thank you very for the opportunity to participate. Just a quick check that the audio is working. Okay. Great. And and will you you be running the presentation then? If you want, we can run the presentation here, or if you want, you can run it as well. We can. Okay, play. let me. Let me. Is that coming through? Yeah, it's cool. Okay, great. Well, I I was able to join briefly for the previous for the tail end of the previous session, and I think it works well with my planned intervention. Uh, as I was introduced, I work at the American National Standards Institute National Accreditation Board, which is one of several internationally recognized accreditation bodies in the U.S. And that's just one of many um, interesting aspects of, of conformity assessment in the United States that has an effect on both our engagement in the TBT committee as well as our cooperation and partnership with. Other members around the world, um, and quite strongly with India. So the way the system has evolved in the U.S. is going to address some of those very issues that are subject of the guidance document being uh, developed in the TBT committee. In the United States, we take a market-based approach to almost everything. So that includes regulations of products that would be covered by the TBT agreement. And because we have a long history of developing standards for such products, and for developing the associated conformity assessment practices and procedures, there is uh, there are a number of regulated programs in the U.S. that have existed for quite some time and predate the TBT agreement, predate the international standards that we use for conformity assessment. So it's often a case where we are working with our partners abroad to ensure that the practices here meet our obligations under the TBT agreement in terms of uh, the favorability of treatment, in terms of the, the burden that's in, imposed by that conformity assessment, but then also recognizing that the market in the United States has already sort of taken a, a given approach. That's complicated by our regulatory system. As I'm sure everyone's aware in our system, like many others, we have a federal level government that has a number of regulatory responsibilities, but then we also have state and in some cases local jurisdictions that are also subject to our obligations under the TBT agreement, but have different authorities that uh, sometimes are complementary and sometimes are cascading. And so when we look at changing the approach to conformity assessment or negotiating with uh, another TBT committee, uh, another TBT member, we have to work with a number of different regulators and a number of different regulatory regimes. Balancing that market-based approach and the fact that we have a minimal intervention by government is the fact that our legal system for product liability is quite strong. So for producers in the U.S. marketplace, one of the, the balances to the need for conformity assessment practices to be increasingly rigorous is the fact that there is a very strong legal responsibility on the producer and high consequences if they put a product in the market that does not meet stated requirements. And so when you look at conformity assessment and the, the different approaches that can be taken, as were just described, and as will be, I think, uh, quite helpfully uh, guided in the, the documents that the committee is generating, 
there's, there's a continuum of the approach of government to requiring conformity assessment and the reliance on the system, the legal system and other mechanisms in the market to ensure the safety and the health and well-being of the citizens. The United States falls at sort of that less intrusive end in most cases and tends to regulate when there's an identified problem. We recognize that, that other countries around the world for different reasons take more of a government intervention approach first. And that's one of the, the reasons why a venue like the TBT Committee is so vital to ensuring that we all end in a place where we are promoting the free flow of goods among our markets and uh, increasing levels of trade. I won't go through all, all of it, but I, I'm, I'm pleased to have these slides shared with you. And one of the reasons I, I'm sharing this information is to give the legal framework and the fact that within our federal and um, sub-federal system, we have a number of documents that direct us toward our obligations under the TBT agreement when it comes to both standards, which I believe you've been talking quite a bit about, and conformity assessment. The Technology Transfer and Advancement Act is, uh, predates the, the TBT agreement as well. It was, it was promulgated in 1995, about the same time. And it gives responsibility to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, where I used to work, uh, responsibility for coordinating federal agencies. And the language that's critical here is the goal of that coordination is to eliminate unnecessary duplication and complexity. Within that system, ensure that the conformity assessment that's undertaken is only undertaken um, once, if possible. And the complexity, the burden, and the, uh, the cost associated with it is as only as burdensome as necessary. In addition to that, there is guidance that has come out subsequently. In January of 2016, we updated a circulator, a circular that gives agencies much more information about how to implement those obligations under the NTTAA, and it also includes verbatim the obligations under the TBT agreement for conformity assessment. And then lastly, there was a regulation that was uh, issued a couple of years ago, it was notified to the TBT committee, which is guidance in our federal regulations on conformity assessment. There are links in here to these documents, but they give insight into the fact that the approach in the US is often to minimize the role of the federal government and rely on the private sector, the private sector for standards, as well as the private sector for conformity assessment. And we recognize that that approach in the US is quite different than other places in the world. One of the outcomes there is that even in the world of accreditation in the United States, we have multiple organizations, many of which have, have existed for uh, decades, which are internationally recognized uh, signatories to either the ILAC or the IAF mutual recognition arrangements, similar to uh, the, the two accreditation bodies in India that are also signatories to those international arrangements. We also have participation in the different sub-regional areas of conformity assessment accreditation. And this makes it, uh, provides choices in the marketplace often, but also presents some challenges for our regulators when they are pursuing the best conformity assessment procedures both for the US and for those goods that are being imported under the requirements of the TBT agreement. What I will say is over the last 10 to 15 years, the fact that we have multiple accreditation bodies in the US has actually, from my perspective, been beneficial for the acceptance of conformity assessment results from other countries. And the reason for that is no single accreditation body in the U.S. is able to provide um, the full conformity assessments uh, infrastructure. And so what we have been encouraging our agencies to do is to reference, I like our IF 
multilateral recognition arrangements as the basis for evaluating the competence of conformity assessment bodies. Now the benefit of that is that the ILAC and IS signatories in India, in Europe, in, uh, throughout the world are also able to meet those same requirements. And that's a very strong way for us to support our obligations under the TBT agreement. However, there are still challenges. There are challenges that have always been there with conformity assessment, and there are challenges that are increasing as the world changes. Conformity assessment is a very complex and potentially costly process. It gets into some minute details about the object that you are evaluating the standards and requirements that are being applied, and then what uh, mechanisms you use to demonstrate that conformity. And so it takes expertise, it takes a level of understanding of not only the, the technical characteristics of the product, but also the conformity assessment landscape. And because of that, at least in the United States, often our regulators are not uh, well versed in that and require support from NIST or from other uh, resources to ensure that they're making the best choices. The guidance coming out of the TBT committee will be another tool for those regulators to help navigate through that complex system. Because we rely on the private sector uh, to a great degree, we still have the obligation of our regulators, as they do in India and elsewhere, to retain authority for the products which they regulate. And so there's a process that we go through to ensure that the regulatory systems, the programs that are put in place, still retain the authority of the regulator to make the ultimate decision on acceptability in the marketplace. And that again is a model for how conformity assessment plays different roles in the overall ecosystem for a given uh, product. Both in the United States and we recognize across the globe that quality infrastructure that supports the standardization process, conformity assessment, accreditation, uh, market surveillance, all of that is different. And so we've done, uh, I think, tremendous work both within the T committee and globally to bring those elements of the quality infrastructure together and to continue to cooperate and coordinate our activities. Now the new challenges in the, the second row are things that we could talk all day about, but it emphasizes the fact that that global cooperation, both uh, through institutions like the TBT committee, but also the quality infrastructure cooperations is going to be critically important. The supply chains, the information that needs to be shared digitally, not just with respect to the transactions, but the characteristics of the product. The, the, the assessment results, the way that those pieces of information can be shared securely with trust will be something we're working on uh, for a very long time. And I uh, applaud the TBT committee for having uh, inf informal sessions and um, programs that have addressed these issues uh, quite extensively. And then finally, products that we thought we had conformity assessment figured out where they are home appliances or uh, electrical goods. The fact that they are now being connected to the internet creates a whole different set of challenges that affects not only the conformity assessment, but also the regulatory systems that are in place to ensure that those pr products continue to be safe and effective. I think I'm at time. I'm open to any questions or discussions, and I certainly can uh, remain online for the rest of the discussions if there are questions later. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Warren. Thank you for the very insightful session. We have uh, 